In this video, we'll review a couple of techniques that you can use to avoid obstructions, particularly large obstructions that you may encounter while completing a compass and pace course traverse. So in this first technique, we'll focus on how to avoid some sort of obstruction if it's in the middle of one of the legs of your traverse. And so, let's say you've been given an azimuth of 60 degrees that you're pacing along. Um, the distance of this leg is 330 feet. So in this example, the screen, the top of the screen is going to be due north. Um, and you encounter some sort of obstacle in the middle of that traverse. So it might be a pond, it might be a stream, um, it might be a large pile of slash or debris or, you know, a thicket of Osage orange or something you don't want to really tangle with. There's a few ways you could deal with this. Sometimes you may just be able to eyeball across the pond or whatever, guess the feet, walk around it to a piece of vegetation that you eyeballed and continue on from there. Um, sometimes you may try to adjust your pace and go over the object or through the object, whatever it is. But here's another approach. So you need to note down the distance that you've paced thus far. So in this example, they've already gone 110 feet. And then you take your azimuth and you add or subtract 90 degrees. You could use another angle other than 90, but 90 is going to be usually the most efficient way to get around something. So here we were going at 60 degrees, so a little bit east of uh, northeast. And so we're going to add 90, which will give us an azimuth of 150 degrees. So now just a little bit east of due south. And so now, pace along this. You need to know the distance. What the distance is doesn't really matter. You're just going to pace until you think you've cleared the obstruction. And so here in this example, they paced out 48 feet. I think they're clear of this pond. Note that down. You have to remember that for later. Then you continue back along your original azimuth. And again, you really have to know the distance you go here. You can go any amount of distance here, but the important part is that it's less than the remaining distance you have on this traverse and that you know what that distance is. So in this example, it takes them about 94 feet to clear this obstacle. And then you subtract or add 180 degrees to the adjusted azimuth, the 150 degrees in this example that you went off of your original direction. Basically what you're doing is you're simply taking what you did here to avoid op the obstacle and you're reversing it back over here. And you go back the exact same distance you went out, 48 feet. And at that point you're back on your original traverse line, hopefully if you've done this correctly. And so we know this person went 110 feet before encountering the obstacle, 94 feet to avoid the obstacle, and now they have to pace out another 126 feet on their original azimuth of 60 degrees. So they've short-circuited around this obstacle here. It wouldn't have been wrong in this example to go the other way. You could have avoided it to what appears to be the left of the direction of their travel here. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's just whatever's going to work in the field. Okay, so that's if the obstruction is in the middle of your traverse, but what happens if it's right at the junction of two legs? Uh, this sounds a little more complicated, but actually it, it's really honestly a little bit simpler um, just based on how geometry is going to work and basically forming a sort of trapezoid. So here let's say we have the same first leg, azimuth of 60 degrees and a distance of 330 feet. That's this one right here. And then once they complete that, they're supposed to turn due south 180 degrees and go another 198 feet. But as the person's traversing this course, they notice that there's a ravine or some sort of obstacle here at the corner that they really don't want to go through. They think it's going to throw them off. What you can do is you can cut the corner. And so you need to know the distance you've gone thus far. You need to write that down so you don't lose track of it. So in this example, they've gone 290 feet and this obstacle is just impacting the final 40 feet of this leg. And what you're going to do in this first example is cut the corner. And basically, you're going to switch onto this second leg where they're heading due south early. Okay, you're not going to complete the full first leg. You're going to switch onto the second leg early. And so go ahead and switch onto that after noting that they've gone 290 feet. And in this example, they go about 60 feet on leg two, and they think they've cleared whatever obstacle is in the corner. At that point, you can complete leg one. So clear the obstacle, then finish the first leg. And so here they needed to go another 40 feet at 60 degrees. And you can see what we've done here, instead of going there and then there to arrive at this point, 
They've simply gone south first and then back to the northeast to arrive at the exact same point. So it's whether you make a trapezoid with these two sides or these two sides, but either way, you should arrive back at this point. So if you've cut the corner now, finished leg two, uh, they knew that over here they did the first 40 feet of it right here, or, or sorry, they did the first 60 feet of it right here. So 198 feet minus 60 feet, you go 138 more feet, and hopefully you should arrive right down here at the correct end of leg two. You can also do this where you simply make a really large trapezoid. You could really switch over at any point and the math works the same. So if this is simpler for you, um, simply switch to leg two early, complete the entirety of leg two, and then just know that at the end of it, you have to complete the end of leg one that you forgot. So that was that 60 degrees at 40 feet. And you can see why this should work. You should end up at that exact same end point. So that'll make a really big trapezoid rather than just cutting the corner to avoid this obstacle. Either way should end you up at the same end point. So that's a couple approaches to avoid obstacles at compass and pacing.